Good evening and thanks for joining us right now for Eyewitness News at 5 on this Tuesday night. I'm Mark Sinning. And hi everyone, I'm Erin Connolly. We begin with an I-Team investigation on what happens if your car gets stolen here in Connecticut. Yeah, if you're left with a big financial burden from it, will the offender be forced to pay? And is it possible to maybe get some help from the state? Chief Investigative Reporter Sam Smick explains why that is not likely. I still don't have really words for it, but... It was insane. When Destiny Danino first noticed her car missing from its parking spot outside her home in Meriden, she thought it might have been towed. I'm just under the assumption, oh, it's just in a lot somewhere. No big deal. The truth was caught on this ring camera video. Around 2.47 the morning of April 4th, you can see two people walking toward her car. Then you can see them moving around inside. They had broken the housing out from under my steering wheel column and they had ripped the key ignition out and that's actually how they started my car. Five minutes later, her car pulls away. New Britain police spotted the car the next day and arrested four teenagers, all between 15 to 16 years old. It was filled with Taco Bell. I'm like, you stole my car to go to Taco Bell? Are you kidding me? They ended up crashing into something, the front bumper needed to be replaced. While her auto insurance paid for most of the physical damage, Danino says she paid for a rental car and had to replace several things the teens had stolen inside. She says she also lost wages from her second job as an Uber driver. Danino says three of the boys went straight into the state's juvenile diversion program, where they are connected with community resources in lieu of a criminal punishment. The fourth was charged with larceny of a motor vehicle. In criminal cases, a judge can order the offender to pay their victim any expenses the victim incurred as a result of the crime. It's called restitution. Danino says she was told she could ask for restitution in the larceny case, so she filled out this form asking for a little over $1,000. For lost wages and out-of-pocket expenses. A judge will then consider the financial resources of the offender and the likelihood they will be able to pay. But Danino says after the boys' sentencing hearing, she was told by the prosecutor it wasn't happening because the teen was going into diversion. I feel like it was already decided before anybody even showed up that day. It shouldn't happen that way. It's happening. But it shouldn't happen that way. Natasha Pierre is the state's victim advocate. She says too often in Connecticut, it's been automatically decided in diversion cases that the offender does not have to pay restitution. In that case, that's just wrong. Putting somebody, taking somebody out of the criminal justice system takes away crime victims' rights, as you see. It seems to me restitution should be part of restorative justice. The state also has a victim compensation fund that helps pay for certain crime expenses, but only if you're a victim of violent crime. Losses from vehicular theft do not qualify. State Representative Craig Fishbein wants to change that. He co-sponsored a bill earlier this year that would have put more funds into the victim's compensation fund and allow victims of juvenile crime, auto theft, and other property crime to be eligible. Victims need to be made whole. Many times they're losing more than just the car. The bill did not get out of committee because there were too many questions over where the money would come from. But Representative Fishbein says he intends to introduce something similar this upcoming session. Danino may have her car back, but her sense of security, she says, is gone. And she feels the ones who stole her car didn't learn a thing. I'll never feel as safe and secure as I once did. But to not be as financially limited as I am now that would just be a small weight off of my shoulders. We also talked with the House Judiciary Co-Chair, Representative Steve Strafstrom, about victim compensation. He says he was not against Fishbein's bill, but says the legislature should talk about holding car companies who don't invest in anti-theft technology and other safety measures financially accountable as well. As for the issue of juvenile restitution, all states have the ability to order it, though some critics say it is ineffective. Since our first report last night, thousands of you went to WFSB.com to check out our interactive maps of where car thefts are happening in your neighborhood. You can see that story and look at those maps right now in the I-Team section of our website. Sam Spink, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Sam, thank